Hey, what's going on? Welcome back. Right now, I'm going to be talking about um, basically how to overclock and uh, what uh, what you'll need to be doing and uh, different techniques on between uh, different AMD processors. So basically, go into your BIOS, um, find the tab that you'll need to be overclocking. OEM boards don't have this. If you went to the BIOS, it'd probably just have like a boot tab or something and be like, and all you could probably change was um, like boot device priority or something. So you're going to be doing your overclocking in the BIOS. None of this software bullshit. You're going to be doing it in the BIOS. It's the best place. It's the most, it's like rock solid. You know what you're getting, right? So for me, it's the AI tweaker tab. So this is what brings it up before. If you're using this, oh, one second. if you're using this old AMD board, this is like six, seven years old. You have something called a front side bus. So that's what AM, I mean, uh, freaking uh, Intel processors use nowadays. They use the front side bus, and this front side bus is basically the speed of your motherboard. So it's like the like your CPU talking to uh, freaking your RAM, North Bridge, South Bridge, etc. It's just how fast your motherboard is. So if you wanted to forums and stuff, people would be like, oh, use a low CPU multiplier. Because all AMD processors are have unlocked multipliers, which means the speed of your CPU is your front side bus. And on this case, it's your front side bus multiplied by your CPU multiplier. So if your front side bus is like 300 and your CPU multiplier is 3, then you'd have a 900 megahertz processor. That's basically how it works. So if you look on forums and stuff, they'd be like, some people would be like, oh, use a, a low multiplier and a high front, front side bus. So like use um, a freaking a times two multiplier and a, f a front side bus of 500 megahertz. That's old shit. That's not what we're gonna be doing today. New AMD motherboards, like this board and the M4 and 2 Deluxe that I have in right now have something called a reference clock. So this is your 200 megahertz that I mentioned before. So it works, it's kind of the same concept as a front side bus, but this is your um, basic, yeah it even says right there, FSB, front side bus frequency. But that's your reference clock, so everything in your computer goes by that speed. Like, uh, your CPU, as it says right here, is times 14. So it's 14 times 200, which would give us a CPU speed of 2.8 gigahertz. Right? So, through a series of multipliers and dividers, everything works like that. Your, this is your hypertransport link speed. It works off of that 200 megahertz. So does the, your Northbridge speed, and so does your RAM speed. So, this is what I'll be talking about let's say your multiplier is stuck at 14. You Like black edition processors like this one, you could set it to whatever you want. But let's say you have an older processor or not a black edition processor, you're stuck at whatever your stock speed is, right? So you're going to be doing all your overclocking by using your reference clock. So let's say we bump it up to 210, right? Because that would overclock your CPU and basically everything else in your system. 210. Now that's the speed that your RAM would be running at. This is where you start running into issues. Everyone's like, oh yeah, it won't be that big of a CPU overclock, yippee ki -yay, whatever. No. You need to worry about your RAM and your hypertransport link. And my hypertransport link frequency doesn't change in real time in the BIOS, but it actually does change. So you're going to want to set everything back. Let's set this at the next multiplier down, right? Because this would be, um, actually, look, I'll just set it back to 200. Yeah. These are your, basically how fast DDR2 comes in. So set it one notch back. This is your Northbridge clock, right? Set it again another notch back. Set everything one notch back and bump that up to let's say 210. Go in increments of 10 megahertz until you start to get into crashes and stuff like that and then go by less. So uh, let's do a quick reboot and see what that does. 
Okay, I just booted back up. I didn't go into Windows, but just with that uh, bump up to 210 times 14, which is what you'll have to be doing because you have a, let's say you have a locked multiplier. Um, let's see what that does. Let's go down to system information. So instead of running at 2.8 gigahertz, you're running at 2.94. That's pretty much the concept behind this kind of overclocking, right? Um, just keep bumping it up, let's say 220. But then, uh, this is when it starts to get a bit hairy. You're gonna start running into problems, right? When you go higher, like this, and let's say you're not going excessively high, your north bridge is just a tiny bit overclocked, hyper transport link is just a little bit, you could even, let's say I have 1066, my RAM is normally 1066 on these dims, and right now it's running at 800, so you know that's pretty well stable if you're using, um, like you keep your clocks on automatic, but you still keep crashing because your CPU is faster. So when you're going to want to up your voltage, this is why I said it's important to take note of your CPU-Z um, before. So you're going to want to take note of your stock Northbridge, stock hypertransport, stock CPU clock, your multiplier, because that's what you're multiplying by, so it's 220 times 14, um, and, uh, and your voltages, yeah. So um, let's say the stock voltage on this is 1.3, I know that. And let's say it keeps crashing in Windows. Up it by point, uh, point 0.2, point 0.25 each time you go up. Because this is the most uh, dangerous part of overclocking. Upping your voltage, you risk blowing up your chip for one. So it's a good idea to do research beforehand. I didn't mention that in the first video. Research beforehand. Like, look up the maximum voltage for your chip and basically what other kind of overclocking everyone else is getting. If everyone else is getting like 3.6, 3.7, then you should aim for about that, right? So, um, start upping your voltages. Um, blue screens of death uh, are normally caused by Northbridge and, um, and uh, RAM instability, so up those. For DDR2, it's always 2.1, that's your stock. Um, maybe bring that up to maybe 2.2 depending on how good your RAM is, right? And uh, your Northbridge voltage for me is 1.22. I know that's my stock. Up that a bit and basically that's the entire concept behind overclocking. It's your reference clock times your CPU clock and I mean times your CPU multiplier and basically you have to just slow everything down, your RAM frequency, Northbridge and hypertransport link, and then you're, you're golden. And uh, I'll get into making sure it's stable and stuff later on.